action. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good to see you this week again. <laughs> haven't seen you for like years. I haven't seen you since this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome everybody how's it going back for another week sharky's paradise weekly recaps hope you guys are enjoying these as much as we are enjoying making them for you i'm sharky i'm jess welcome back for another recap <laughs> This week, we had some great stuff go on in the shop. Uh, we all spent some time discussing exactly what kind of projects that we had specifically working on. Just we're starting to get a really good rhythm here of figuring out how we can go through our week and document things and then also be able to talk about that. So uh, the tattoos that I got to do this week were all pretty Spectacular. Got to work on a gentleman named Brandon. Super cool guy. We had some great conversation. We did a cover up of the Leprechaun. Ancient, like, I don't know, it might have been from He Man or something. I don't know. That's what it kind of looked like. But anyway, we got rid of that. We put a, uh, the Grim Reaper. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Book of Revelations, but there's a legend of the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming in, one of which is the Pale Rider. And in this particular instance, he looks like the Grim Reaper and uh, his name is Death. Hopefully you liked the tattoo. Here it is. And here, and maybe here. So anyway, my favorite part about that session though was just the overall time that I got to spend with that particular client. He's really interesting, really interesting dude. He's well read, enjoyed that day a whole lot. We're going to be moving on to the color portion of that tattoo. So this particular project had you know, cover up involved. We did all the black line work layout and black fill that we could on the cover up itself and basically got ourselves to the point set up where we're, where, where we're set up to start the color uh, packing on this next round. Now, one other tattoo that I'd like to talk about. This lady came in initially to talk about covering up a tattoo that she had on her wrist. She worked with one of the other artists in the shop. Ultimately, didn't really have a large scale design that everybody was happy with. So we pursued her and followed her up with her and made sure that we got her back in. And I ended up working with her specifically to develop this tattoo. Ultimately came up with a design that she would have fell in love with. <laughs> Went from doing this cover up on her wrist to doing it this big on her thigh. Great tattoo, awesome project. Came out really sweet. And I'm so happy that we were able to resolve that. So hopefully you guys enjoy that tattoo. Here's a shot of it. My name is Jessica, in case you don't know it. You can check out my Instagrams, jessc.sp or piercings by jessc.sp. Great news, check out our website. We're building a new website. We have a couple new buttons. You can always, if you got some tattoos to request or you want to book a piercing or permanent makeup, you can just go onto our website, sharkiesparadise.com, top right corner, and you can submit a tattoo with photos or you can submit a consultation and appointment request to get started with us. All right, so I had a couple new clients come in to get their brows done. I actually got to do some really beautiful virgin brows for once. One of them was a ombre powder brow, and this client's name is Erin. She's actually a private chef. We did some beautiful brows on her, and they just blend really nicely. She actually is booked for a touch-up coming up, so keep an eye out for that. They healed super nicely, they look beautiful. How do they awesome. make you feel? Make me feel awesome. <laughs> Another client that I got to do some powder brows on works at a lawyer's office in Denver, and 
They turned out super amazing. She was using a stencil to put on her brows every single morning, using a nice gel, anesthesia powder gel is like one of the top notch ones that everyone always brings to me. And they have little stencils, so people color those stencils on. So if you do that, you should get your brows done because we can make them look very natural. Essentially what you're doing when you're doing powder brow makeup is you're creating the look of makeup on your brows. So it doesn't actually look tattooed, it just feels like a nice powder and looks very natural. Would you quit? Would you quit? No, it's my job. It's my job. It literally is our job. Quit! No, it's my job. Turn it off! My job. Um, Content. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> hey, guys. This is Chelsea with Sharky's Paradise. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, a really special tattoo that came in. It started off as a walk-in and turned out to be like a permanent client that's going to be coming back, so that's exciting. She came in very emotional. She wanted footprints for her uh, macaw that had passed away. We did them right here on her arm as if the bird was sitting here on her arm. Something very special for her. Super happy at the end. Almost made me tear up. It was great. Very special moment that I'll never forget and uh, she plans on coming back and getting a lot more tattoos, so it's super exciting. The next tattoo that I'm gonna talk about is a bouquet that we did on the rib cage. Anastasia is one of my clients that's been with me before. She got the first bouquet on the other side of her rib cage and then came back for the second. She's great. I love hanging out with her, so when you're sitting there tattooing for hours, it's always a good thing whenever you get along with your client. The tattoo turned out awesome, I thought, and she loved it, so I'm excited to keep giving her some more ink as well. You gotta get in the zone for your tattoos. What's up guys? It's Santi. Thanks for tuning back in. The first tattoo I got to do this week was on my great aunt. She really wanted a dragon. She's been wanting it for years and when she found out that I was doing tattoos she immediately called me. She explained her idea and she was like I'm ready to do this but I need a month to do it. And I was like okay. So once I got the call that she was finally ready it was super exciting to do that. She wanted this Dragon that was kind of put together from a few different images. She didn't want anything too masculine looking. She wanted something that was a little bit more along the lines of like whimsical and fairy-like. So we did something with that. It has like a nice red body with some kind of iridescent looking wings on it. She was super excited to do that just because dragons have a lot of meaning to her. Um, a lot of that side of my family is from Japan. Unfortunately, I am not Japanese. It would be pretty cool. I used to speak Japanese though, but um, that's a really big meaning for her. She just has a lot of culture based in that and all her kids are Japanese. So that was a lot of fun. She really loved it. Pretty sure I almost made her cry. Can you say some Japanese words for us? No. <laughs> all I, I can all I can say is uh, okay. I can say konnichiwa on the Mayawa Santi Deska Genki Deska. That's saying hello. My name is Santi, and then I ask what your name is, and then I can count to twenty. And I'm not gonna do that for you. I had a client come in, Rito. He's been a super loyal client. We are also doing a patchwork sleeve on him. I'm doing a lot of patchwork sleeves right now, which is really cool. We got to add some different pieces to him. We touched up some other pieces as well, but the biggest additions were we added a, I think it was like a deer skull on his arm, as well as a heart, and then we also added a black flame. He's doing that one, we're doing that one, we're doing that one there. So all those had a little pops of color in them, but there's some healed pieces in there as well as like a traditional shark that I had done of him. We did Escobar, so it's Bart Simpson, but he looks like Pablo Escobar. So it's really cool being able to see those pieces and really finish out something for him that we started a little bit ago. So in my Instagram bio, I have a link for people to request consultations with me. I got to do my first tattoo from that. I had this girl named Bella, she came in, she wanted to do a more Japanese traditional kind of crane on her, but we made it super feminine, super fine line still. We did it right on her ribs, made it super pretty with some different gray washes in that, so it'll heal really light. Didn't want to do too heavy on black, but it was super exciting to get her her first tattoo. She definitely enjoyed it. Ribs are 
hard place to tackle, but most times they're really easy to do if you're only going for a few hours on them. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Eric over Sharky's Paradise. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, we did some really fun pieces this week. Uh, one of the pieces that I did that I really enjoyed is a double snake head. Uh, backed up from the far image, it looks like a butterfly on the thigh. Really cool piece. Got to practice a lot of good black and grays. This piece was also on a returning client. Uh, he came back in, he got an astronaut skull that you guys have seen in the previous weeks. We went ahead and did the other side. He wanted a snake climbing into a tree, storm bush style. So yeah, we had set that and oriented it for the forearm and got a really good tattoo out of it. It was super fun. Thank you. How does that make you feel? Come on, Hector. Hey, talk to you. Hector. <laughs> Hector. You can go back. Hey, what's up? It's your boy Hector Illusions Inc. over at Sharky's Paradise. This, let's go ahead and pop into the week. You know what I mean? Jumping that motherfucker. <laughs> uh, what's up? This is Illusions Inc. Hector Busto is over here at Sharky's Paradise. Another wonderful week of doing tattoos with the gang and all that. You know, I had a returning client. He's been coming to me since I was tattooing out of my house and this time we did a cross on his wrist. And you know, he's just always adding fillers. This guy is amazing. He's always coming back and just giving a lot of energy. He likes to get tatted by just anybody at the shop. So I think that's really awesome just because like, I'm sometimes not available and it's really cool the fact that I can depend on other people at the shop to give my clients some awesome work. So I think that's really cool. That same client had his best friend come in afterwards and he got a thorn crown on around his knee. So definitely a little tricky just because of the placement, but we got it to work and everything. Putting in those lines and those knees, oh God, that was hard, but I think that was really fun just because it was a new learning experience. I haven't done too many knees. I think that was like maybe like my fourth, fifth one. It turned out really great. He really loved it. He's always posting it on Snapchat and Instagram. So I think it's really cool when you know your client loves your work and is posting it back to back and just shows that you know they really love their tattoo and that they will just do anything to show it off and if they have to take five pictures on Instagram then they will and I think that's awesome. You know I was gonna die. You hit him, bud. Alright, what's up y'all? It's your boy we are one tattoo, Christian Lewis. You know I didn't really do shit this week. I did a couple pieces. Let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, y'all, I guess I gotta do this again because the first time wasn't good enough. But it's your boy, We Are One Tattoo, Christian Lewis. You know, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Let's just jump straight into it. I started out with the riff cuss, uh, cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Wrist cuff, you know, about to start the armor of God. We had a great time doing it, talked about a lot of religion and other stuff. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but it was a great time. Can't wait to finish that up. We're going all the way to the shoulder, so it was great to start out. Probably one of, you know, five or six sessions. The next piece that I did was on a first timer. It's a full sheet of paper, pretty much. It says, ain't no rest for the wicked, right above the knee. Because if you're gonna get a first time, you gotta jump all the way in, no numbing spray, nothing special. You know, solid saturation, and it was a great time doing it. And guess what? He came back probably about a week later and got another piece, because tattoos don't hurt. You'll not stick that on me. And the rock, stick it! Ow! He's gonna stick it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys! This is Alex. Welcome to a new weekly recap. This is her first tattoo. She's doing so awesome. Oh my god. So, a few pieces I did this week was a mom and a daughter came over and they wanted their first tattoo. She wanted a lavender on her chest and the mom wanted a little like fine line hummingbird on her wrist. So look, you know what happened that day? I had another tattoo. They wait like an hour, hour and a half. I was so nervous, I was super stressed out. They were waiting for a long time. That gives me like, ah. But we worked together, they were very excited. They called their sister that has like 100 tattoos. They were like, oh yes, I like it, I love it, it's great, and blah, blah. So yeah, they loved it. I do a good job, what can I say?
I just like your first tattoo. <laughs> and two friends came over and they got their lip tattoo. A friend of her passed away. He liked the, the word swag. Everything just like kind of connected together. And she was just so happy. She had the great energy. Her friend too. It was a really cool time, even though I was kind of nervous for those lip tattoos, but I kind of want to get one. My super great client, Jill, came over. She wanted some butterflies on her shoulder. She just said, Alex, you do you. I'm open for any color. I just want this kind of style and you go. So then I told her, okay, Jill, this is a group, I don't know, group work. <laughs> so we kind of like team up and she picked the colors and I just mix them up and put them on the butterflies. And I love when clients trust me because just like pieces just come up beautiful somehow, even though I don't know what I'm doing, but yes, it, it looks super good. I enjoyed it. We make a lot of fun of everybody together. We told a lot of stories. She met my parents. She had like huge dogs. We talk about the dogs and her family in general. I had a lot of fun talking to clients. Eric, where are the sharks containers? I don't give a shit. <laughs> What's up everybody? This is Devin over at Sharky's Paradise. You can find me on Instagram at slater.inks. Here are some of the tattoos that I did this week. This week I got to do a cross with a daffodil on it to represent my client's grandmother. My client is a friend of mine from an old job we used to work together. She's one of the first people who got a couch tattoo from me, so I'm glad that we are able to get her into the shop to get her some better tattoos now. She's a super friendly client, she doesn't hold the old bad tattoos against me, so <laughs> it was uh, lovely to be able to give her a new tattoo that is a little bit better uh, than it used to be. Next up this week, I got to do a sun and moon on my lovely client, Nancy. She and her best friend, Donna, came in. Um, they are a couple of the folks that we got to meet at the Villain Arts Convention in Denver, so it's nice to be able to reap some of the rewards and see the people that came from there. She's one of my returning clients now. We've got a really cool piece that we did on her. You'll get to see that in the next episode. There was a girl that came in, she was recommended to me by one of my other clients. She had gotten a tattoo right here that reads Desi Dorada in her dad's handwriting. It was a really lovely backstory on that one. Her dad used to read her this poem growing up and she never really put together what the title was, but it's called Desi Dorada. They had it hanging on their wall. Sort of a poem just saying express yourself in the loudest way possible. So she wanted to get that for her dad. Getting tattoos for her parents is the way she gets tattoos without getting in trouble. So that is always a funny little uh, story to have to hear. But yeah, she got this lovely tattoo in her dad's handwriting. She was super happy with it. I was super happy with it. It was a very clean tattoo and the backstory was nice as well. Devin got locked out of the bathroom today. So I tried to get her to do burpees because you know, burpees, they solve everything. By the time you made it in there, how did it make you feel? I don't really care. <laughs> so Sharky and the kids ran around the shop and shot flies and that was really cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You forgot the most important part. We were armed. We had the latest, greatest bug assault, salt shock. Yeah, it's nice. If you don't have one, you should definitely invest in one. Oh, oh God, it's a fly! Fly! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, it's mom! <laughs> you think she's wearing orange! <laughs> so, anyway, we get this bug assault gun. We gotta go on yet another fly safari, but this time I gotta take Axel and Allie with me. So we hunted the whole shop. And in the end, we were victorious. We're getting the trophy mounted right now. Was It wasn't like a really exotic fly, it was just a fly. I have a tough time finding the taxidermy, but we smoked that fly. Oh, there he is! He's gone! You got him, find it. Oh! He took the guts right out of it! Yeah! Where'd he go? He shot him all the way over there. Look, he's in pieces. Team work. Team work! The That's Sharky not Army! Work. What? So, 
This week I also had the opportunity to do a tattoo on a mother. She wanted faith before fear with a little uh, heartbeat line work with, I think it was semicolon. I think that represents a surviving suicide or attempt or just having, you know, those mental thoughts and everything. So I thought that, that was a really nice, cool tattoo to give her because, you know, we're all survivors in this world, so it's awesome to give ourselves, you know, mementos that let us know that we're going to keep on going. I got to tattoo my cousin from Texas. He's a really cool guy, and he loves a lot of my Japanese work. And we did a Japanese girl with an Oni mask coming off of her face with a katana on the back. I think my first time actually mixing gray wash and color at the shop, so that was really fun to show Sharky, you know, what I can do with that. And it turned out really awesome. After that, he came back and got some other few pieces I'll definitely have to talk about in the future. But yeah, no, it was really fun. It was exciting just because I love to do Japanese work. That's just like really a lot of the things I like to do here. So a couple different uh, girlies that I know came in. My roommate's little sister and all of her friends came in for a bunch of matching tattoos of hands going like this. Those were super cute. We didn't get a ton of footage of those, but I got to do an old 2003 cover up, I guess. Not, not necessarily a reworking. We just got to go over an old tattoo. I the matching one. I'm just doing this one for fun. Because it looked like that. So oh. I'm going to make it look like that. Don't work. It was nice to get to see all of those girls. They don't come in very often. They're all from out of state, so they all pile in here when they're all in the same part of town. They come get little matching tattoos, and it happens like once a year. It's kind of cool. So yeah, we just got to finish those up and add a little bit more to the 2003 that she, one of the one of the girls, had already had. So really fun experience all around. So this week we had the cool opportunity to do three matching tattoos with three different artists. Um, it doesn't happen that way very often. Usually when we have matching tattoos come in, we want them all to be done by the same person so that there is no sort of variation in the design at all. But these family members came in and they actually preferred it that way. Between me, Eric, and Chelsea, we all got to do each one of their tattoos. It was a mother and father and they brought their son in who's going off to the military to get a matching tattoo. We ended up showing them a couple different designs and they settled on Chelsea's design. Thought that she had the best one so we each got to kind of take a stab at it. A silhouette with a horse and a cowboy with some barbed wire around it. We had to make the one that I did slightly larger uh, to orient to his chest because his daughter and wife were much smaller than him. It was intimidating because I'm the newest and I'm an apprentice and so I had to make sure that mine was just as good as theirs was, so. Does it feel like you imagined it would feel? Uh, no, not really. No? No. Nope. You you worse it? or better? Both, I guess. Oh, yeah. It's just a needle. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. It's just a needle. <laughs> 11, to be precise. That came with some difficulties, but I think it turned out great, and he was super happy with it, so. The vibe of everyone working together on the same project at once is kind of fun. Overall, they came out almost identical tattoos, so good job on the group for getting good fundamentals down. So it was definitely a lovely experience to get to meet all of those family members and hear all of their stories individually and what the tattoo represented for them. They were super, super sweet. Hopefully we get more opportunities like that again in the future. All right, we got ourselves a first timer right now. <laughs> So this next one, my dad got to come in and we finished the second session of his tattoo. The first time he came in, we just did line work, and then the second time we did all the color. This is a tattoo that was aimed more towards old school. I'm still in the process of finding my style, so it's exciting being an apprentice because you don't really know exactly what you're going to go into or what your specialty might be. So like getting to try all the different styles and just trying to figure out where I fit and what I enjoy doing the most, it's exciting, um, challenging, but I'm up to try anything and just having fun with it. Should we stop? So Danica is a friend of mine and my husband David. We decided to do this space, out of space, flowers, that we are still gonna work on it once it's finished. I'll for sure update you guys. But yes, it was amazing. A lot of pain, but also lots of color and lots of passes and lots of, you know, little details. We start tattooing here at 4 p.m., finish around 1.30 a.m. So it was a little challenge for like her 
but she handled it really good, great time. I learned a lot. It was pretty much my first flower that I did like without eye outline, so it's like pretty cool. So yeah, we did this skin of four leaf clover <laughs> in his chest. He is considered a very lucky person. It's not like something like super meaningful or anything, but he just loves that style. He wanted to change the normal like items that the king has on the regular cards to like a feather and a sword and then have like that mirror, kind of like mirroring, you know? So it's two spades or two swords and then two feathers. We stopped just right when we were gonna start colors because he had to like work the next day. It was a Sunday late night. And so we're gonna finish the piece in like probably two weeks or so. And it's gonna be super, super amazing. He was very happy and thankful for that piece and I was very glad that he is. The second tattoo I got to do this week was on Harvey, who's a client I got to meet at the convention we were at. It was really cool to meet him and get to talk to him. He had a lot of different ideas on what he wanted to do. We were trying to figure out what exactly we wanted to do. But when he finally got to come in, we got to do a really cool Davy Jones portrait on him. That is from Pirates of the Caribbean. So it was a lot of fun getting to talk to him about all the movies he liked, seeing all the different tattoos he had. So while we were working on that, we got to watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Got to talk a little bit about that. It was originally supposed to be pretty big on the back of his calf, but then he came in and decided he wanted it like that big. It really tested my skill and I was able to see something happen that was really cool for me and it's definitely one of the coolest tattoos I've gotten to do recently. This week I have some different things. I have a tarot card with the Grim Reaper and it says death on it and it's got some flowers and leaves popping out of it. I also have a skull wearing like a little like button up with a tie but his head is a swimming pool. That one's really cool. It'd be really cool to be able to do that one in the full color that it has, especially pretty big so you can see all the detail. If you want to catch any of those, you can definitely see them probably somewhere around here. And then on my Instagram at Inked by Bonte. The last thing that I got to do this week that was super cool, um, it was the Aurora Chalk Art Festival, or it's a memorial foundation for the 720 Aurora shooting that happened a few years ago. It's a super meaningful thing to me just because my family was involved in that and we did lose some family in that shooting. It was my first time participating, but I got to do this really beautiful piece that represented metamorphosis to capture 10 years since the tragedy. So it was a lot of fun getting to do that next to my family. I realized chalk is a medium that I actually enjoy using. So it's something that I'm probably going to look forward to doing a lot more in the coming months as well as next year as to be able to do a lot more of that. How was swimming? Pretty tight. What'd you do? I swam. One of the piercings that I did was on my niece Emery. We did her double nostril piercing, one on each side, and I got to send her back to Arizona to start school for the new coming year with a couple double nostril piercings. That was really fun and she did amazing. She did not have any teardrops at all. Congratulations, Emery. So when people come in to get piercings, I am already creating a relationship when talking to them that very first second. We get to pick out just gorgeous jewelry. We have so much different pieces, unique pieces, unique lengths. I like to use a little caliper, it's a measuring tool and I measure every client's ear or their nose or their lip, where they're getting it exactly. We leave a little bit of room for healing and I have them come back in about six weeks, sometimes six to nine months, just to get something smaller in there. What's really nice about the threadless jewelry is you can leave the flat back in your ear and just change out the different tops. So when you're going on duty or you can't wear something to work, you can just change out your tops and it's just really nice to have all those different options. I am still doing the majority of the dermals in the shop and we have lots of dermal hardware so we have 14 gauge and 16 gauge feet so you can set those inter internally threaded posts and then we have a huge selection of both 14 and 16 gauge tops that can get put on those dermals. So I did have the opportunity to be able to do 
a face dermal, I think it was on this side, on the left side, yeah, on a lady who, who had been here previously looking to try to get a, a, a dermal that she had at one point in time uh, put back in or changed to the other side. And I believe that we looked at it and the location that she wanted to do it, um, just the scar tissue wasn't giving us what we needed there to, to try to set a dermal there. So we didn't even attempt it through that scar tissue and I think we moved to the other side if I remember right. It went well, super cool, I love doing dermals. They're really fast. We have other people in the shop now who are learning to pick up some of that work. So hopefully we're gonna have some other people throwing down some dermals here soon. If you guys didn't know, this is my beautiful wife, Mrs. Jessica Charkey. She has been an ongoing tattoo project. We met before she was a tattoo client, just for the record. And we are finally getting to the point where we're making some of the finishing progress on these huge cover-up projects that we were working on. So if I could please get you to stand up, all right. <laughs> we worked on this beautiful flower that runs all the way back up. It's like a Hawaiian scene now. So I did this, I did this tattoo on her hip, this black and gray. And then this was by a guy named Stephen Cash, this microphone. Shout out Stephen, still did a great job on that. And so we kind of went with the vibe around that. So we, we, we played kind of off of this style here and we built this flower structure around to accentuate her body and then pulled these flowers all the way up and around and through her whole back. We're not gonna go all the way up, but it goes all the way up across and it'll go, ties into the scene on her back. It's really awesome to see that bright, beautiful work come off uh, uh, and start to finish up some of these areas. I'm so happy to see that happen. watching guys hit me up on lethally blonde tattoos on my instagram or my email as always go ahead and follow me on instagram i got some available pieces i changed my instagram it's gonna be ar that collectives just follow me follow my art i have a lot more cooler designs coming out i have been doing a lot of anime tattoos so i can't wait to show you guys that stuff i do have some designs available um if you would like to check those out make sure you dm me on instagram you can find me there at slater.inks you can also find the rest of the shop at sharky's paradise so you can follow us like us yada yada uh, or you can always call the shop really easy way to reach us or you can always check out our website we got two buttons on there now for a free consultation or requesting a tattoo definitely check those out and i look forward to talking to you guys more next week Quite a bit going on in the shop right now, so please stay tuned in and come check us back out. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and follow. Wait, no, comment. <laughs> subscribe and follow are the same thing pretty much. Get out. Mm. <laughs>